But uh, it was, you had to wait 20 years. Oh, and you got it only when you were a party member. You have to, you know, belong to Communist Party to pretty much, and you, it doesn't, by signing, waiting 20 years after the payment of the money. It's, I mean, it's, um, and uh, so in 1971, the new leaders, which was, uh, his name was Garrett, um, they kick out peace, I mean, semi-peacefully, the old guy, the Gamuka, and they got a new one, and they said, you going to help me, guys? We're going to change. We're going to build this, like a second Japan. We're going to build a new country, you know, vibrant. And, um, and the, like population had no choice pretty much, or you know, like an eternal optimist. They sign up kind of, under one third of the people. They said, listen, like the idiot before, they were stupid, ignorant, ugly. We, we know what we're doing. We're going to go to the ideals, back to the original ideas, but by Marx, Karl Marx. Okay, so there is uh, next past next five years, 1976. <coughs> Nothing happening. Same thing. Not much. It's it's a lot of steam. It's nothing happening. A lot of noise. Nothing happening. You know, there is some progress, but it was artificial. And um, so there were riots, you know, the proletariat, so to speak, rioted in 19, actually in the uh, town I was, you know, born in Radom, it was 1976, with riots. And uh, I remember like a fire, you know, sign of about 10 miles north from me, and it was a central committee of the party burned because people burned it. <laughs> so it was really one of my happiest memories. Um, well, it's just, you know, it just was. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, nobody died or anything, just, they just burned it. Uh, so thankfully, if you remember, it's uh, in 76, um, the guy called uh, Jimmy Carter was selected or um, took, took, took over the presidency. Jimmy Carter, supposedly really nice guy, and he provide in um, so next four years were really at least there were chicken and corn in Poland because the Carter provided loan about total twenty billion dollars worth of loans to communists in Poland so they can keep people more quiet and fed. So I remember the chicken, I was cooking chicken fed by American corn. You know, so they prolonged, the li he prolonged the life of the regime for at least four years since, you know, 1976 to 80. Then in 80, what happened, uh, what happened in uh, in Europe and Poland? The guy now uh, known as Karol Wojtyla was elected to as a pope. You know, in Rome. So in uh, he was vi he visited Poland in 1979, and it was the communists were just they didn't know what to do with it. I mean, it was like they were like just uh, they didn't know what to do. It. So. When he came to Poland, he was his his um, a theme of the of the visit was um, be not afraid. Be not afraid was a theme like uh, from the Bible. Uh, I don't quote probably precisely, but it's meaning be not afraid. And uh, people, a lot of people, quit being afraid. For some reason they needed this little push. And uh, 1980. The movement called Solidarity Trade Union <coughs> started, which wasn't, you know, Trade Union was political movement, obviously. But, um, and this was the beginning of the end.
and um, unfortunately, I was I, w I finished <coughs> in 1980 with, uh, and I didn't see any future for myself or my family in this um, dump, so to speak. And so, but unfortunately, they drafted me to the army, so I had to go for a year to uh, so-called pe people's army. Everything in communism, they start every thing in, in communist days uh, redefine the meaning of words. Like justice became social justice. So <coughs> you don't follow the law, you, you follow the social conscience of the court, <coughs> of people who, you know, who selected the court because it was a, you know, so it becomes justice, it just becomes easy to manipulate. Because if I think you are enemy of the people, I mean, that's bad. You know, so if you're enemy, I can do whatever I want to. So the army becomes a people's army. It's, you know, this, um, I mean, it's like, it, it, it's, um, I mean, it's like, it's, it's really requires a lot, you know, each item would require much longer um, dissertation, so to speak, because it just, I'm just, you know, it's just like a brainstorming pretty much. And um, so when I was in the army in 1981, um, they decided, people, the people's peop army decided that people had too much freedom. They just don't know what they want. We know better <coughs> than what they want. So they introduced the martial law on December 13, 1981. I woke up to the martial music on the radio. And I knew if it's martial music on the radio, it means people are going to die. This is total, in every totalitarian regime I know of, martial music means sending people to die. So then I went, I had to go to the, to the unit which was on the Baltic Sea. Um, and I had uh, about 200 miles with the speed of light. It took me about 12 hours to go on the train, you know. And uh, I remember those 12 hours, and I was in uniform, unfortunately, in uniform, I and mean, my skin was burning, but the uniform, but nobody, and I, I mean, I was crowded, I mean, it was crowded, I mean, I could feel parts of the body, I didn't want to feel people, because it was so close, and that, they, I mean, nobody spoke to me once, because I was in uniform, so I was like totally devastated, so thankfully, when I arrived to Elblum, which is like a little military city on the Russian Baltic between Russia, you know, Russian Baltic border, uh, our officers removed all the weapons from the unit and, and uh, ammunition because they didn't trust us. So it was very interesting. Only professional and uh, party people were allowed to carry weapons. And they, but I didn't know if they're going to send us, you know, um, send us to control some kind of riots, which I, you know, I knew I couldn't shoot to people. So I was like praying if I had a, to have a, a to have a courage, courage to to turn and look around and shoot officers. But you know, you never know <coughs> until actually happens because you know you can really be here over then nothing is happening, you know. But if it's happening, I didn't know. So I was really upset for many, many weeks because I didn't know if I, I will stand by my conviction. Because, you know, everybody would condemn me. So the, this was the longest weeks of my life, in 1981, you know, in December. Um, and then, then I knew I had to. We had. I had to do something with my life, and I was. Uh, I was, uh, you know, 